Hello, we are doing, oh God, that hurt. Okay, uh, should be chapters 15 and 16 today. I am trying to get it loaded in. Start. I had to build, rebuild a website over the last two days. That was unpleasant. I have to rebuild. So I had a builder like um, like Wix or one of those like where you drag and drop the pieces. Um, and unfortunately, the particular builder I was using no longer works. So you can still see the website, but I can't edit anything. Um, which unfortunately, when you're constantly doing like for a bite at a time, I fortunately have until the end of... Um, and of the island before it has to be done, but I had two other websites. Well, I have one still to go, um, but I had another podcast website. I need to make sure this is... I switched chairs on Saturday for briefly, and I'm not entirely sure that I've gotten everything back the way it's supposed to be. This should be about eight pointed at my mouth. Um, but yeah, so I had another podcast website that is every two weeks I have to change it and I hadn't been able actually every week I have to change something add something to it and unfortunately I need the builder to work to add it so last week I wasn't able to change it this week I needed to do an even major change because every two weeks I have to add like an additional page into the website so I spent Saturday and Sunday rebuilding the good thing is I tend to just use the same like um, I change like the backgrounds and stuff like that in the formats a little bit, but I use the same templates um, for like across all of my websites just to make my life easier. So like when I learn to use one, I don't have to learn a second, third, fourth one. Um, I just use the same one again and change the background and the... Um, some of, I, I like the menus. I tend to keep the same menus, but like on a personal one, like on the Brie Carlisle website, I would have contact me instead of listen to the podcast. Um, anyways, that is enough about that. Let's get chapter 15 done. <laughs> I need to change this into presenter mode. When I copied the font from the, um, I've been trying to like keep, um, cause pages is what I use to do the auto scrolling and I just copy it from the text and then put it into pages. So it'll scroll for me. For some reason, there's like a letter in the first chapter we're going to do here. And the formatting of the, like, Dear Anne Shirley was, like, really wonky. That's enough talking. I've gone on for three minutes. Let's get to the chapter. I'm so sorry. Start the scrolling. Chapter 15. A dreamed... Dreamed. Oh, my God. Chapter 15. A dream turned upside down. Just one more week and we go back to Redmond, said Anne. She was happy at the thought of returning to work, classes, and Redmond friends. Pleasing visions were also being woven around Patty's place. There was a warm, pleasant sense of home in the thought of it, even though she had never lived there. But the summer had been a very happy one, too. A time of glad living with summer suns and skies. A time of keen delight in wholesome things. A time of renewing and deepening of old friendships. A time in which she had learned to live more nobly, to work more patiently, to play more heartily. All life lessons are not learned at college, she thought. Life teaches them everywhere. But alas, the final week of that pleasant vacation was spoiled for Anne by one of those impish happenings which are like a dream turned upside down. Uh, Mr. Harrison's voice... And she's let it. Down. Been writing any more stories lately? Inquired Mr. Harrison genially one evening when Anne was taking tea with him and Mrs. Harrison. No, 
answered Anne rather crisply. Well, no offense meant, Mrs. Hiram Sloan told me the other day that a big envelope addressed to the Rollings Reliable Baking Powder Company of Montreal had been dropped into the post office box a month ago, and she suspicioned that somebody was trying for the prize they'd offered for the best story that introduced the name of their baking powder. She said it wasn't addressed in your writing, but I thought maybe it was you. Indeed, no. I saw the prize offer, but I'd never dream of competing for it. I think it would be a perfectly mm -mm. for it. I think it would be perfectly disgraceful to write a story to advertise a bake adversi oh my god. For it. I think it would be perfectly disgraceful to write a story to advertise a baking powder. It would be almost as bad as Judson Parker's patent medicine fence. So spake Anne loftily, little dreaming of the valley of humiliation awaiting her. That very evening, Diana popped into the porch gable, bright-eyed and rosy-cheeked, carrying a letter. Oh, Anne, here's a letter for you. I was at the office, so I thought I'd bring it along. Do open it quick. If it is what I believe it is, I shall just be wild with delight. Anne, puzzled, opened the letter and glanced over the typewritten contents. Miss Anne Shirley, Green Gables Avonlea, P.E. Island. Dear Madam, we have much pleasure in informing you that your charming story, Avril's Atonement, has won the prize of $25 offered in our recent competition. We enclose the check herewith. We are arranging for the publication of the story in several prominent Canadian newspapers, and we also intend to have it printed in pamphlet form for distribution among our patrons. Thank you for the interest you have shown in our enterprise. We remain yours very truly, the Rollings Reliable Baking Powder Co. Co. I don't understand, said Anne blankly. Diana clapped her hands. Oh, I knew it would win the prize. I was sure of it. I sent your story into the competition, Anne. Diana Barry! Yes, I did, said Diana gleefully, perching herself on the bed. When I saw the offer, I thought of your story in a minute, and at first I thought I'd ask you to send it in, but then I was afraid you wouldn't. You had so little faith left in it, so I just decided I'd send the copy you gave me and say nothing about it. Then if it didn't win the prize, you'd never know and you wouldn't feel badly over it, because the stories that failed were not to be returned, and if it did, you'd have such a delightful surprise. Diana was not the most discerning of mortals, but just at this moment it struck her that Anne was not looking exactly overjoyed. The surprise was there, beyond doubt, but where was the delight? Why, Anne, you don't seem a bit pleased, she exclaimed. Anne instantly manufactured a smile and put it on. Of course I couldn't be anything but pleased over your unselfish wish to give me pleasure, she said slowly. But you know, I'm so amazed. I can't realize it. And I don't understand. There wasn't a word in my story about, about, and choked a little over the word, baking powder. Powder. Oh, I put that in, said Diana, reassured. It was as easy as a wink. And of course, my experience in our old story club helped me. You know the scene where Avril makes the cake? Well, I just stated that she used the Rollings Reliable in it, and that was why it turned out so well. And then, in the last paragraph, where Percival clasps Avril in his arms and says, Sweetheart, the beautiful coming years will bring us the fulfillment of our hope of... Sweetheart... Arms and says, Sweetheart... The beautiful coming years will bring us the fulfillment of our home of dreams. I added, in which we will never use any baking powder except Rollings Reliable. Oh, gasped poor Anne, as if someone had dashed cold water on her. And you've won the $25, continued Diana jubilantly. Why, I heard Priscilla say once that the Canadian woman only pays $5 for a story. Anne held out the hateful pink slip and shaking fingers. I can't take it. It's yours by right, Diana. You sent the story in and made the alterations. I, I would certainly never have sent it, so you must take the check. I'd like to see myself, said Diana scornfully. Why, what I did wasn't any trouble. The honor of being a friend of the prize winner is enough for me. 
Well, I must go. I should have gone straight home from the post office, for we have company. But I simply had to come and hear the news. I'm so glad for your sake, Anne. Anne suddenly bent forward, put her arms about Diana, and kissed her cheek. I think you are the sweetest and truest friend in the world, Diana, she said, with a little tremble in her voice. And I assure you, I appreciate the motive of what you've done. <clears throat> I did something weird. I gotta check and make sure. Percival clasps Avril in his arms and says, Sweetheart, you've done. Diana, pleased and embarrassed, got herself away, and poor Anne, after flinging the innocent check into her bureau drawer as if it were blood money, cast herself on her bed and wept tears of shame and outraged sensibility. Oh, she could never live this down. Never. Gilbert arrived at dusk, brimming over with congratulations, for he had called at Orchard Slope and heard the news. But his congratulations died on his lips at sight of Anne's face. Why, Anne, what is the matter? I expected you... Mm -mm. Start. Face. Why, Anne, what is the matter? I expected to find you radiant over winning Rowling's reliable prize. Good for you. Oh, Gilbert, not you, implored Anne, in an et tu brute tone. I thought you would understand. Can't you see how awful it is? I must confess I can't. What is wrong? Everything, moaned Anne. I feel as if I were disgraced forever. What do you think a mother would feel like if she found her child tattooed over with a baking powder advertisement? I feel just the same. I loved my poor little story, and I wrote it out of the best that was in me. And it is sacrilege to have it degraded to the level of a baking powder advertisement. Don't you remember what Professor Hamilton used to tell us in the literature class at Queen's? He said we were never to write a word for a low or unworthy motive, but always to cling to the very highest ideals. What will he think when he hears I've written a story to advertise Rowling's Reliable? And oh, when it gets out at Redmond, think how I'll be teased and laughed at. That you won't, said Gilbert, wondering uneasily if it were that confounded Junior's opinion in particular over which Anne was worried. The Reds will think just as I thought, that you, being like nine out of ten of us, not overburdened with worldly health... that you, as I thought, uh, hold on, as I thought, that you, being like nine out of ten of us, not overburdened with worldly wealth, had taken this way of earning an honest penny to help yourself through the year. I don't see that there's anything low or unworthy about that, or anything ridiculous either. One would rather write masterpieces of literature, no doubt. But meanwhile, board and tuition fees have to be paid. This common sense, matter of fact view of the case cheered Anne a little. At least it removed her dread of being laughed at, though the deeper hurt of an outraged ideal remained. Short chapter. I'm just gonna roll straight into, I'm trying to because I'm a little bit um, island um, on podcast episodes. I have enough recorded, but I have like I've been editing the day before for the next day. Um, so tonight I'm going to try to clear the backlog. So since it is a holiday for me, it is Labor Day currently um, when I'm recording this. I am going to be um, trying to bust through all the recording. I got to get two chapters done for an audiobook, and then I'm doing two podcast episodes, and I'm going to edit everything that I have on backlog and hopefully have time to read my next manuscript. So we shall see what happens. Thanks, guys.